All right, so welcome to today's episode of Tomorrow's Leader. So let's tell a story today. Today's episode is all about a fascinating journey in my life that took place about a month ago that I wanted to share with you and bring you into my world a little bit because it was a pretty fascinating story. And it was a story about my move. As many of you know, I've moved down to North Carolina, which has been an absolutely fantastic experience living in a great house near my family, my friends. Everything is terrific, except the journey to get here was a debacle. So I'm going to take you through this. There's lots of different things that we can pull out of this because it's my job to bring real life situations into our little leadership world here. So uh, this all began when I was looking at different moving companies and I've moved 30 times plus in my life. So I've been through tons of different moves. I know what to expect, or at least I thought I did. And uh, I was looking at all kinds of different companies and trying to figure out, okay, do I use a smaller company, a larger company? And there's benefits and costs and everything to, to both sides of it. And you can never go into it knowing exactly what's going to happen. So move from Boston to North Carolina. Obviously, it's not around the corner. I had a big place, moving into a big place, a lot of stuff. So I made sure I did a lot of due diligence. I interviewed a lot of companies. I had estimates and this and that. So I finally get a guy. This was with I Lied Movers. I get a guy who comes over to my place who says, listen, I'd like to take a look and, and give you the estimate. Now, some people actually just gave an estimate online. This guy, this company decided to come out and really give an accurate estimate. So right away, I'm feeling you know pretty good about it. Um, and this guy, let's call him David uh, for, for sake of anonymity. Uh, David comes over and I could not have been, you know, when you meet somebody and just right away, you just get a great impression of them. I really did. I mean, David came in. Uh, my daughter was there. Uh, he instantly made conversation with her. Uh, he, he was really friendly with my dog and just the nicest guy. Looked like Santa Claus and just, you know, couldn't have been a, a radiated more positivity. And just, again, one of these people you instantly like. So, you know, within the first couple of minutes, I'm thinking, OK, this is a guy. Now, this guy not only was there to give an estimate, but he was the person that was really going to be my point person through the entire experience. And that's what he positioned himself as. So it was really, OK, I am here to you know, decide and help you decide, are we the right company? And if so, you're going to be dealing with me. I'm the person that's going to help you through this entire thing. So that to me, it was kind of like this concierge that's going to take you through a really kind of challenging, you know, experience, potentially challenging experience. So uh, he comes in and he takes his time. He goes to every single item. He inventories everything. He makes sure, hey, listen, that's going to move. That's not going with us, you know, and he's writing everything down and making great conversation with Sky and, you know, Bodie's you know, loving him and stuff like that. So I'm just feeling really good. And uh, he's there for maybe a half an hour. And he tells me a couple things. He says, listen, I know how important this move is and I know how stressful it can be. My job and our job at I Lied Movers is to take all the stress off your plate. And, and I, my role is to make this go as smoothly as possible and to make you just enjoy the experience as much as you can and get you there as quickly and, and efficiently as possible and with the least amount of hassle and cost and everything like that. And he said, so when things do go wrong or if they do, I'm the person that's going to handle it for you. Uh, and, and I said, okay, well, what's the difference between you? I've got, I've got other places that are, you know, offering low, pretty low estimates, smaller moving companies. He said, listen, you don't want to go with a smaller, move, smaller moving company. You want to go with a company that has their own trucks. You're going to have Allied Movers trucks come up to your place. We're going to take your shipment. It's not going to be these other third parties, this and that. You know, so I listened to them. Now, they weren't the cheapest. They actually, he sent me an estimate afterwards, and it was a little, not significantly higher, but it was higher than most of the other estimates. After thinking about it and my feelings with him, I trusted my gut and I said, you know what? It's worth paying a little extra money for that extra service and that extra attention and the uh, less hassle and stress and anxiety because I got enough other stuff to, to worry about. So I called up David. I said, you're our team. We're going to do it and uh, let's schedule it. And it was scheduled for July 1st. So everything is okay. I'm packing away with Sky and Nick and we're getting everything ready and stuff like that. Uh, July 1st comes and um, I have two trucks that show up at my place. 
Neither one of them is an Ally truck. Uh, one is a rider truck, and the other is a U-Haul, literally, like rental trucks. Uh, I, I asked the crew, I said, well, what's, I don't get it. What's, what's the deal? Where's the iLight truck? And they said, well, we, we had a little scheduling snafu and, and, and we have these trucks and then we're going to load it into an iLight truck. I'm like, well, I, that, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, really? So right away I'm thinking, oh, geez. And, uh, these guys load nice enough guys. They come in and, uh, this was a Tuesday and uh, I was planning everything on the other end in North Carolina. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I, I've got to make sure I've got appliances coming. I've got people installing stuff. I've got all kinds of stuff happening on the other end. So I needed to know when my stuff was going to arrive. Now, the contract I stated, I signed rather with I Lied Movers, said that the materials, my stuff would be delivered anytime between July 2nd and July 8th. Now, I've moved many times. I've moved far, far distances across the country, and you can do it in a day. So truly, July 1st pickup should have been done. I was getting down there the next day, July 2nd, maybe July 3rd. So I'm thinking Wednesday or Thursday. I ask the guys, the movers, and I say, okay, when is this stuff going to arrive at my place? And uh, the one guy says, Wednesday, tomorrow. I said, fantastic. That's awesome. Okay, great. All right. So right away, I'm feeling a little bit better. And uh, he comes up to me later. He says, you know what? It might not be Wednesday, but definitely by Thursday. I said, okay, that, that's okay. That's, that's fine. That actually gives me a day to kind of just get everything set up and everything like that. Thursday actually might even be better, I'm thinking in my mind. So they pack up. They get everything in the truck. Uh, it's a long day of moving, and uh, they depart. I depart uh, with Sky. We begin our journey down to North Carolina. Little did I know, I would never see those guys again. Never. Never. I don't know where they went. I don't know who they are. I can't even track them. I have no idea what happened to them. But they apparently were just the pickup crew, not the delivery crew, not the crew that would actually take my belongings. Now, again, I've moved 30 times in my life. I've never seen a crew pick up load and then pass it off to another crew to make the delivery. So I'm a little, uh, not to say a little, uh, obviously, as I realize this, I'm, I'm concerned. But needless to say, I'm thinking, okay, Thursday, my stuff is going to come. I get everything ready. I'm down there. Well, Thursday comes and goes, nothing. I'm like, well, where's, where's the delivery, guys? I call up David, uh, who has been uh, in, in, in amazingly and impressively quiet through this whole experience. I have been the one having at this point to reach out to him. Hey, why do I have rider trucks, U-Haul trucks? Uh, super nice guy. I understand your concerns, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, uh, and, and I call him. I said, where's my stuff? He said, it's, it's, it's en route. Uh, it should be in the next day or two. Okay. So now this is going to Thursday, now to Friday, now to Saturday. Well, fast forward a couple of days. It is now, uh, July 8th. Eighth, the last day. Now, needless to say, I've had to reschedule stuff, work stuff, appointments, all kinds of things each day because they're delivering the things and I've got to clear out my 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 schedule because I've got to tell them where it's for those of you who have moved, you know that's a busy day. So it went from Wednesday to Thursday to Friday, now to Monday, now to Tuesday. It is now past the window of July 8th. It is now July 9th, uh, and I'm finally getting a driver who has told me, and basically what I find out, is that my stuff was moved into a warehouse in Boston. Now that's what's caused the delay. I'm like, I don't get it. Where, and what, what made me find that out is me asking David, okay, I don't get it. You take my stuff from a truck. I don't understand why it wasn't put in an Allied truck to begin with, like you said it would, but now it's being unloaded into a warehouse. Why is he getting unloaded into a warehouse? And then why is there another crew involved to pick this thing up? And why is there a whole nother truck? This just thing is a whole debacle. So finally, by July 9th, I get a call from the moving company, from the driver himself. And he says, listen, I'm sorry. I know this has been a delay. We've got your stuff. We're en route. We will be there tomorrow. And uh, we'll be there at 9 o'clock in the morning. I said, okay, fine, great. I'm just relieved to finally get my stuff. He said, by the way, they did tell you that we weren't able to load all your stuff, right? I said, no, nobody told me you weren't able. What do you mean not able to load my stuff? He said, well, the truck, we couldn't fit all your stuff. 
So we only have part of it. I said, well, what are you talking about? Why do you only have part of my stuff? I don't get it. He said, well, I, I, don't, I thought they would have told you this. I said, no, nobody told me this. Of course, then that's a call to David. I'm like, what, what is going on here? I don't get it. Uh, so they're coming with part of my stuff. David doesn't know the status. I'm telling him apparently new information. Uh, doesn't know where in this theoretical warehouse my stuff is. I'm thinking, okay, what is what does that actually look like? I mean, is it just my stuff in an empty airplane hangar? I mean, is it like strewn about all over the place? I mean, what I got a lot of stuff and and things that I care about and I've had for a long time and are valuable. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what's the de- what's the deal? Well, needless to say. All I'm focused on right now is I want to get my stuff. I hope it's most of my stuff. I'm now dealing with the stress of not having everything, but needless to say, I've got a truck on the way. Terrific. Everything's great. I'm I'm ready and waiting. Well, he calls me that next morning at about eight o'clock in the morning and he says, "Uh, I got bad news. I've got a flat tire. (sighs) Okay. All right. You got a flat tire. All right. All right. Got it. Uh, and he said, so we're going to be delayed. I'm waiting for them to, uh, to, to get here and they're going to change the tire, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we don't have a spare and, uh, and this and that I'm like, okay, well, this is par for the course so far. So waiting, uh, he calls me back later that day, uh, and says, uh, okay, uh, we, we got somebody here, but the tire that we need, they don't have in stock. So it's going to be another day. We got to wait for that tire to be delivered. I'm like, okay. at this point, it's just absolutely nuts. So uh, I'm waiting. <laughs> so they say, okay, it's going to be the next day. I'm now just beyond frustrated. Uh, I push it off uh, my schedule, my appointments, everything, move it to the next day. Uh, he calls me again. Great. Everything's terrific. We got the tire. This is the next morning. He said, listen, the crew has arrived at your at your place or is going to arrive in a little bit. Can, can you meet them there? I'm going to be, you know, about an hour, another hour. I said, okay, no problem. So I go, I, I meet this crew and I pull up. Now my house is, is sits up on a, on a hill and it's a pretty high hill and it is a steep driveway. So I will be the first to say this is a beast of a driveway and um, it's not a really long driveway, but it's incredibly steep. And I'm thinking, okay, there is no way that a truck is going to go up this driveway. These guys are going to have to carry it up. So I understand it is going to be a tough day of moving. Well, I see I arrive and these two movers are sitting there outside my house. They're outside their car and they are just staring at the driveway like this. And I I go up to them. I say, hey, guys, how you doing? Are you guys with the crew here? I know the driver's on his way. He's going to be here in a little bit. And these guys literally are just fixated on, on the driveway. And they're like, that's your driveway right over there? Is this is this where you live? I said, yeah, it is. And they're like, wow, that's a, I don't, I don't know. It's a the driveway. It's just, I don't, it, I'm sensing a little bit of concern in these guys. So I'm like, listen, guys, I'm going to go get you some coffee. Let me run. I'll be back in a little bit. Uh, I go to get coffee. I get a phone call from the driver who, uh, who says, listen, uh, I've got bad news. I just talked to the, to the crew and uh, they, they saw your house. They saw your driveway and uh, they quit. I said, what are you talking about? They, what do you mean they quit? Like they quit their jobs? They're like they, they quit. Yeah, so they're gone. They're not at your place anymore. They, they just quit. I'm like, are you, what do you mean they quit? I don't get it. How do they quit? Don't they have a job to do? He said, yeah, they just, they, you know, they didn't under, know, know what it was going to take. That driveway was just really a, a beast. And apparently it's really steep. Is that right? I'm like, yeah, man. I mean, it's a driveway, but people lived here before. I mean, there were movers that got stuff up and you got, you got to be kidding me. He's like, listen, I'm working on a new crew. I'll be in touch with you. We're trying to get it done today. I'm like, listen, this has to get done today. Has to get done today. This is ridiculous. So he's uh, going through the whole day, calling me back and forth. No crew. Bottom line, finally gets a crew. It's the next day. Now we're now delayed. I mean, this is at least a week and a half. If not, I can't even, I lose track of days. Uh, beyond frustrated. And uh, finally, 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 the next day, a crew arrives. Finally, I get my stuff. So they start walking in. Uh, and again, I'm like, all right, let me just hit the reset button. These guys, it's not their fault. These are a new crew. They don't know anything about what's happened in the past. Let me just treat these guys well, get this experience done, and have it be in my stuff as quickly as possible. They start walking in, and box after box is like crushed. <laughs> like, I mean, this stuff, I'm like, I don't get That doesn't even look like my stuff anymore. Boxes are just <laughs> like <laughs> things are torn apart. 
it's horrible. And I'm like, just put it there, there, you know, I'm doing the directing thing. Here's that goes in that room. That goes in that room. I'm again, I'm happy. I'm in my new place. Uh, and then they're bringing stuff. The guy brings in, walks in with this big thing. And he's like, um, where does this go? I'm like, what is that? And he's like, I don't know. It's your, your thing. Your, your, it's a big, like huge, ugly, like Christmas tree thing. I'm like, dude, that's not my thing. That's not mine. Where'd you get that from? He said, it's in the truck. It was part of the delivery. I said, dude, that's not my stuff. That's literally someone else's stuff. Someone probably is expecting that. That might be like a, you know, fair family uh, thing that they had passed down. And that might be an important thing. That's not my stuff. He's like, well, I don't know, man. We're not going to take it anyway. So, I, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it here. We can't take it back. I'm like, really? What? Are you kidding me? So wait a sec. If, if I have somebody else's stuff, does that mean somebody else has some of my stuff? Is that what this is going to happen? Is that what, what I'm going to find out? He's like, I, I don't know. I just, you know, I was in the truck and blah, blah, here it is. I'm like, oh, whatever. I'm just, I'm, I'm beyond belief here. So I, um, I end up uh, leaving. This was maybe lunchtime or so. I went to get the guy's lunch. I want to keep them fed, keep them moving, keep them energized, and then and handling this big hill, which they're doing a great job of the driveway. I mean, it's a crazy driveway. Uh, and I go, and, and Sky calls me, and she's like, Dad, we got a problem. I'm like, Sky, I don't, I don't have the capacity to hear any more problems. What, what's happened? She's like, one of the guys almost got killed. He almost died just a couple minutes ago. I'm like, what are you talking about? Are you kidding? Like, what, what happened? She's like, Dad... These two guys were at the top of the stairway with Nick's big dresser, and they, one of them dropped it, and it tumbled down the stairs, and it almost hit the guy. And I'm like, okay, that's, did it hit the guy? She's like, no, but he was so close. He was so scared. He almost died. And I'm like, okay, so what, is he okay? She's like, he's totally fine, totally fine. He's just a little shaken up. He's scared, so he's going to need a little breather. I'm like, okay, so he's okay, but my dresser tumbled down the stairs like did it tumble did it slide was it a tumble was it a full-on head over heel tumble she said yeah i said what happened with the dresser she's that it's like really it's destroyed it's totally destroyed and the banister is off the wall now <laughs> i can only laugh we tell <laughs> telling the story the banister is off the wall i'm like okay and the wall is all messed up okay and the carpet is all messed up too and the, the dresser is just in pieces I'm like, okay, all right, great. But the guy's okay, right? It didn't hit him? Okay, terrific, great, I'm happy. Okay, so needless to say, I come back, I see the mess, My the dresser is in pieces. And this was a nice dresser, you know, one of these two drawers above four drawers, blah, blah, blah. Um, I only know that because I had to research replacement costs and all this kind of stuff. Crazy, crazy situation. So these guys are putting together. I've got my beds, my tables, and everything like that. And you know, you got to move. They got to they put everything together. The guy comes uh, later in the day, and it's to the end of the day, he's like, "We got everything here." He said, "But and now none, nothing's put together. No tables, no chairs, no beds, nothing." And he said, um, "We don't know where the hardware is." And I said, "What hardware? What are you talking about?" And he said, "The hardware, like for the beds, the tables, all the nuts, bolts, screws, everything to put everything together. The movers, you customarily put it in a box. You mark it clearly. Hardware in one place. You label everything." He said, "We we obviously weren't the crew that took the stuff apart, so we don't know what they did with it. And it, maybe it's in Boston." I'm like. Are you kidding me? So you're telling me you can't put together these beds or these tables or anything like that? And they're like, mm, unless you have like, you know, a whole other box of hardware somewhere that we don't know about. No, we can't. I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, so I, I, this is just the, you know, absolute straw. Uh, the fi I, mean, I just couldn't believe this. So I, I basically now I'm dealing back and forth with Eyelight. I'm calling up David. What the? You got to be kidding me, man. This is ridiculous. I'm getting nowhere. I'm getting nothing. I'm getting no communication through this whole thing. Literally, like zero. I'm having a call all the time. I'm telling him everything. He doesn't know anything. He's not doing anything. Now, here's the thing that I, that happened. What he was really good at is making me feel like he was doing so. We're trying to make it seem like he was on top of it. Very empathetic. Oh, geez, John, I'm so sorry. I can't believe that. Wow. Okay. And he'd fire off an email to someone named Dan, who Dan never responded to anything. 
and and we all know these types of people that are really good at going through the motions and making it seem like they're handling a problem or they're on top of something. They're more concerned with the appearance that they're on top of something and handling a problem than they are with actually really solving the problem. And just think about that for a minute. You know people like that in your life and business, more concerned about making it seem like they're on top of something versus really diving in and solving the problem. And that was this guy, totally. Very good at sending off an email. Ah, what's this happening? We got to fix this. We got to get on top of this. And, you know, he could text somebody else or email somebody and CC me on it. And, and it was all just motions, going through the motions, not willing to take the extra step to solve the problem. Needless to say, now one delivery is done. I'm lacking all my hardware. I'm lacking the rest of my stuff, which turned out to be about a third of my stuff. And I'm now dealing for the next three weeks with trying to get my stuff. I have a vacation with the family, beach vacation. I'm like, can I get it before? It doesn't happen before. I'm back and forth every day with iLide. They're basically, I'm, 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 I'm at one point asking, listen, I want to speak to your boss's boss. I don't care if it's the CEO of this company. I'm literally looking up the CEO and I'm sending emails. No response, of course. Uh, and I said, I don't care how high you have to go. I want to talk to your boss's boss. I want to get this thing solved. Well, what I realized was that was the magic to their ears because now it relieved them, this team, David and his team, of any responsibility whatsoever. Because now I have asked to involve a higher up. They now somehow got permission to step back and not do anything. So now I had nothing. I'm trying to work with some of the senior execs. They're not helpful. They're not responsive. And now I have less support, less help, less problem solvers because of diffusion responsibility and wanting to pass the buck. Hey, listen, I don't want to deal with it anymore. Now, I get it. I, I, I know that they, I, listen, I was a waiter years ago. I was a horrible waiter. I was a terrible waiter. I, I, I'm apologizing right now to all the people that I served over those years that I dropped things on, that I forgot stuff, that I forgot you, that I never realized I was, you were sitting there for 20 minutes. Uh, and there were some times where I would almost not want to go back to the table because I screwed something up so badly. I didn't even want to face them. I was so embarrassed. I was mortified, literally. Like that's, I remember being like, can I just leave or something or just never go back and maybe send somebody else over? Uh, that's what this was. They literally, they, they were got to a point where they, and they couldn't argue. They just were so embarrassed. They're like, okay, we just got to get out of here. We don't want to even hear his stuff anymore. And just, I, we just, you know, I'm sending angry emails and time. Ah, crazy. So finally, my, my overflow, as they call it, my overflow uh, comes, which is the other shipment that was finally located in a warehouse in the you know, deep trenches of Boston somewhere. And uh, this overflow, tr overflow truck comes. And uh, I'm thinking, okay, well, I've, there's a lot of stuff I'm missing. I'm assuming it's got everything. Uh, and, and the overflow truck comes and, uh, as he, as he backs in, he's pulling in and this is a beautiful tree lined street, nice big, you know, trees with overhanging and stuff like that. And he's just ripping out <laughs> tree branches. I mean, he's pulling up and backing up and trying to get, you know, close to my place and tree branches, trees are bending, branches are coming off. I'm like, Oh my God, I can't, I just can't even take, I can't even look. I can't even look. I'm just, then he's trying to drive up the driveway. I'm like, that's not going to happen. And he's driving on my grass and just, I'm like, it's just, I'm like, please stop. Just stop right here. Let's get this stuff out. Uh, make a long story short. They bring the stuff in. Another nice guys, another nice, my third crew, third crew. Uh, and these guys, uh, I, you know, they're moving stuff. I had outdoor table set crushed my 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 chairs uh, and then bottom line is i i was missing about eight thousand dollars worth of stuff and and truly eight thousand dollars i'm still you know dealing with with i lied right now about my belongings uh, and they've been good about that give them a little bit of credit but uh bottom line is i'm missing a ton of stuff a lot of stuff basketball net uh furniture stuff's broken all kinds of stuff and i'm assuming somebody's enjoying it somewhere in the country that got my stuff like i got that nice christmas tree thing that i'm not doing anything with so bottom line this thing was a debacle 
it's over now. I'm handling the aftermath of, of settling stuff and all that kind of stuff. But it was a disaster. And here's the thing. Here's the leadership lesson from this. There's, there's five problems that took place. Five things that you can take away from this experience that I take away from this experience. One was it started at the beginning with overpromising, right? So David never should, he overpromised, overpromised, overpromised. Listen, I'm gonna take care of everything. I'm gonna be on top of everything. You're gonna have I lied moving trucks. Not the case, not the case, not the case. He just, you know, absolved himself of any responsibility, stepped out into the background, occasionally sent an email to make it look like he was involved. And that was it. And he had no intention of doing that. Nice guy, not effective, not uh, not uh, willing to deliver on what he promised. So problem number one, over-promising and under-delivering. Uh, problem number two, main problem, communication. I know from moving, stuff's going to go wrong. Shit's going to happen that you don't expect it to. I get it. But had he called me the first day and said, hey, listen, you, it's not going to be an eye-lied moving truck that comes in, but it's going to be a rider and a U-Haul. Don't panic. It's perfectly normal. We're just going to take your things we want to give you the best experience possible. We're going to put it in a... Had he explained everything to me and told me in advance, here's what's going to happen, everything could have happened the exact same way. But had I known about it in advance or had some proactive communication from him, I would have been so much better. I wouldn't be doing this podcast right now, honestly. I, I really would. I, maybe it would be a funny story I'd tell, but it wouldn't be. it would be so much of a different experience. Okay, that's problem number two. Three is lack of ownership. Why can't somebody take responsibility? I see companies do this all the time. Everybody wants to pass the buck. Nobody wants to see a problem all the way through. Everybody wants to just create an image that they're doing something enough to get by, going through the motions so that they're not you know, accused of not doing anything, but, and then they want to pass it off to somebody else. Where are the problem solvers? Take ownership. As the leader of an organization, you have to make sure people take ownership to see it all the way through. Total diffusion, and this is problem number four, diffusion of responsibility. You got too many people involved. When too many people are involved in trying to solve a problem or make a decision or execute on something, it's ultimately diffusion of responsibility. I just naturally assume somebody else has got it. If two people are in charge of managing a team, that oftentimes, more times than not, goes downhill. Those co-captains or co-VPs or co managing partners, whatever it is, it's tough because unless you really delineate responsibilities crystal clear, the other person's automatically assuming the other person's got it, right? Oh, I didn't know you never talked to Mary and went through that issue and helped her with that, solve that problem. I thought you were doing it. I, I didn't think I needed to do it and vice versa. That's problem number four. Problem number five, too many damn steps in the process. Too many places where balls can slip through and problems can be created. Why have two trucks when you can do one? Why have two crews? That's disaster to begin with. You know things are not going to be passed off. They're not going to know how the furniture should be assembled because they're not the ones that disassembled it. They're not going to know where the hardware box is, which I did get, by the way. Finally, that did come with the overflow. Uh, why have a warehouse involved? I, so you're taking my stuff off. You're loading it onto a truck. These are all the possibilities for damage to items, which there was a lot of damage done. You're lo- it's not... You're loading onto a truck and loading off to a truck. Okay, that's two, two potential issues. In this case, you're loading it onto a truck. You're loading it off to a truck, putting it in a warehouse, loading it on a truck, loading it off a truck and into a house. You got three times as many possible times where this could be damaged, right? Stupid. Why do that? And of course, that's the end result. You know that's going to happen. Five problems. And there's more, I'm sure, But the one overlying thing is leadership, right? David was my leader. David failed me. David wasn't a good leader. He was a good face person for the company, but he wasn't a good leader. A leader is a person that takes responsibility for that whole thing. There was no leadership. There was a guy, Dan, on the emails that apparently was one of these senior VPs. I never heard from him. I never got a response. I never talked to him. Nothing. Maybe he's not a real person. Maybe it's just an email address that they put in there. Damn. Let's send it to Dan. If we got a problem, Dan. Dan's going to handle it. Dan will get back to you. Dan will do it. Dan's gonna, He's a go-to guy. He'll do bang, 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 bang. But it doesn't do anything, right? It's all just smoke and mirrors. No problems are solved. Leaders get stuff done. There's always going to be problems. Leaders communicate. They take ownership. They build a team that takes ownership. They take a, build a team that works together to solve problems, not avoid them, but to solve them. 
and they eliminate steps and unnecessary issues or potential problems where balls are going to get dropped. So I hope that was helpful. This is therapeutic for me to get this out. This feels good. So uh, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. That's my lesson for today on leadership brought to you from a personal story of my move. Uh, Keep doing your thing. Keep sending your comments, please. I love your comments, your suggestions, your ideas. Keep sharing, keep liking, and do all that good stuff. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a good one.